Greetings, everyone. My name is Etterville, and welcome to the finale of my Let's Play of Skellboy Refractured. During the last episode, we acquired the key to the princess's chambers. The end is truly near. I didn't notice this checkpoint at first. The only other place which I didn't find was the torture chamber. It must be connected to the dungeon somehow. You can say sorry to me. That's totally new. Let's do this. Down to the final dungeon. Oh, this is a torture chamber. That makes a lot more sense. Ring out. So now it's been converted into the true final dungeon, where everything is frozen over, and a lot brighter to boot. A tad unconventional, making the ice dungeon the final one in the game. I'm just happy I didn't miss something by accident. I remember this place. Zombies infinitely spawn in here. Just keep on slashing. Bypass this entire challenge while we're at it. Shortcut back. It's you again. You were one of the toughest bosses originally. Oh no, and now there's two of you. The Bongo Bongo Twins. Hey, you stole my weapon. Give it back to me.
I just noticed the spikes down there. Like in the original counter, they need to stand out more. Eh, that's fine. It's supposed to be the final boss. Or the penultimate boss. I see something in the distance. Almost dead. I can't see. Again, statues. And why is it sometimes that the weapon swap direction changes? See? I was always pressing left there. Attempt number 7, same star as before. I reiterate my earlier point, the hardest part of this fight aren't even the main bosses, it's the statues on the sides. That's the most frustrating part. Try defeating one of the statues first, or maybe spread the love. Actually, no, that's a bad idea. If I spread the damage, they may both do the slam attacks at the same time, making my life a lot more difficult. See what I mean? And I was there. That's one down. That's two down. It's over. Or is it? The chain goes ever deeper. The true final stretch. It's time to save this kingdom for good. A full graveyard. I've now visited every place in this game. So let's get a refill of everything. That fight was easy, the hardest fight of the game, mainly due to the statues on the sides. Once I got the hang of dodging them, the fight became far more manageable, and then I could focus more of my attention on dodging the attacks of the two big skulls.
Ever since I entered this hellscape, I did not obtain any new weaponry. There's Evil Skippy and the Bone Dragon. True final boss time. Evil Skippy was a villain all along. Off you go. What makes this worse is that, if I get hit by the icy sludge, I slip around more. It's time to avenge this kingdom once and for all. He's the one behind all this madness. In both the good present and this bad future. And to clarify a statement I made during an earlier episode, perhaps we're playing as the princess in the ancient hero's body. I'm trying to use a charge attack as it deals double damage. Always on the army. I already have enough to deal with. What's next? Bring it on. Of all the attacks, I wish I had the most unique Tau. Like he glowed purple before he did that. I can't reach you in time. He uses the same Tau for several other attacks. We made it, and died. What? That's... that's pure jerkish. There was no way I could outrun it. Closest attempt yet. The biggest issue is my relatively slow walking speed. That's what's working against me the most. In the interim, I decide to swap out my original shoes for the bat shoes. That way I can run faster. That was my main complaint during the previous 16 failed attempts. Thus begins attempt number 17. If need be, I'll equip some more speed boosting gear. In this game, slowing down usually means death. For the first phase of the fight, I'll try playing it safe. Eh, 
not the best start. I should have just taken one damage there. Yep, I will, Hyper. This is simply a bonus stream, made necessary because I wasn't able to beat this game on Sunday. Whoa! I should have picked up the body instead. We made it to the second phase, and immediately take a hit. Haha, uh -huh, you fell off. You too. I think we made it to the final phase again. It's over. Maybe? Whoa! Try doing a cheap shot there. But after 16 failed attempts, Dark Skippy and his undead Frost Dragon have been defeated. And therefore, the evil stored in the Blaze Mace Staff has been purged. Now peace returns to this ruined world. Better yet, everyone in this timeline has been fully revived. That's a much better outcome than I expected. I thought we'd have to take this score, man back into our own timeline. Oh! Even Princess Olgeta has been restored.
What an awesome outcome. Yeah, I one shot on the bonus stream, Paul. That was totally unexpected. I thought it would take at least half an hour. Once I learned the pattern clearly and chose the right set of gear for this challenge, I made it. This ending is totally worth it. After all the trouble I went through, now the staff will never more be an issue in this kingdom. Reroll for a better future. And I would like to clarify something. Recall when we were reading Scoreman's diary, he mentioned reviving him. Oh my goodness, what is this? All I say is rocks and flash. Who is there to save us now? It's the skeleton. Skeleton. And thank you for making this game, you my Kai. The end. So at that, this marks the end of my Let's Play of Scaleboy Refractured, an okay 3D action adventure game. The graphics felt like it was an epic world translated directly into 3D. And the way it was presented made it feel like it had a more cardboard-like aesthetic, or a similar material. Music was fine as well. I noticed that most of the tracks are remixes of the main theme. Story-wise, it was fairly straightforward. The biggest twist was at the end of the first playthrough, where it was revealed that Skippy was in fact Princess Olgeta all this time, perhaps using the body parts of the original Skippy. Other than that, it was very straightforward and aimed for a light-hearted comedic feel. Outside of refractured mode, that is, once we entered that world, all the humor drained away. But I'm happy that world was completely saved. Gameplay-wise, I say that this did an okay job. Controls were very responsive. I like the variety of body parts, weaponry, and hats you can equip. And you get extra bonuses for equipping a full set. And I miss most of the body parts and weaponry too. I'll have to take another look once I enter the random dungeons on normal and refractured mode. Also, Refractured Mode, aka New Game Plus, I thought was a great addition. Along with the expected difficulty elevations, the entire location progression has been significantly upended. The best parts of this game were definitely the boss battles, especially once we entered Refractured Mode. They are the high points of this game's combat system. Another thing I liked was how open Normal Mode was. I didn't realize how many shortcuts you can open up. I just wish the world was a bit bigger. There is one other feature of this game which I didn't showcase at all, and that is, you can play 2 player co-op. You can play it both locally and online through Steam Remote. My biggest critique with the game is the general gameplay loop. It's simply too simplistic. Oh sure, the combat is fun, yet it doesn't really gain that much depth. Most of the enemies could be dealt about the same way. Use maces for armored enemies, use the axe for red root enemies, and use the sword for everything else. 
The Lazza slash Spears were okay at the beginning, but they lost their luster in the end game, and the Wands were simply for backup. My opinions may change if I get better weaponry, as I'm pretty sure I'm missing most of the top tier weapons. To put it another way, outside the body swapping mechanic and the graphical style to a lesser extent, I feel the game plays it too safe. And comparing this to many other action adventure titles released on both the PC and Switch, it easily gets overshadowed. Nonetheless, this game had a consistent quality to it. There were no points where it dipped or surged majorly. So overall, I say that this was an okay title. It had a very consistent quality, never dipping or surging around the baseline. I will also say that this is a good beginner title, if you're inexperienced with this genre, but be careful if you decide to play Refractured Mode. The difficulty spike between the two modes is very noticeable. This game will last you about 3-5 hours, 5-8 to eight if you decide to complete everything in Refractured Mode as well. For its current price point of $20, I'll say to pass this one over, unless you're very interested in 3D 8-bit action adventure titles and or like what you see in here. Even then, I say to wait for a sale. Nonetheless, I hope the developer learns from this title. They clearly have an understanding of what makes the game fun. They just need to expand upon it in future outings. I thank you, my Kai Games, for providing me a key for this title. It's really appreciated. Well then, thanks for watching my Let's Play of Skillboy Refractured viewers. If you enjoyed it, please rate, comment, favorite, and or subscribe, as they all help out the channel. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter as well, and join my Discord server, as I regularly post updates there. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you all in a future Let's Play.